Hey folks, it's James, and it's day six of the 12 days of Procreate, and that means two things. One, I forgot to sing five golden rings on day five. Not that I would ever do that to you. And two, that it's time to learn my single favorite way to take your hand-rendered plans, elevations, and perspective sketches to the next level. And that's with shadows. Not computer-generated shadows, but rich, punchy, lifelike, hand-drawn shadows that you create in minutes with Procreate. And I'm going to show you three ways to do that right now. Like in this video, I'll show you how to add lifelike shadows and shade to any drawing using either the manual method or what I like to call the painting by selection method. There are real advantages to both, so let's take a closer look. In this first example of the manual method, I'm going to use my favorite flat brush and I'm going to set the color to black and I'm going to name a new layer and call it shadows. So basically I set the brush at the right size and keeping a uniform loose pressure I just start to brush in the shape of the shadow. Obviously this isn't a perfect layer of shadow. I just want to get a quick impression of how this new tone changes the drawing. So here I'm switching to the flat brush in the eraser mode and I'm just going to clean up this shadow line coming from that window header. Now I can also do the same with a shadow coming from a tree outside and this is a little different. It's just going to be an organic shape. Uh, it takes some practice to get, get this to look like a real tree shadow. I'm not doing my best here, I just want to show the example. So again, if I slide that slider, you can see that um, that shadow can be used at whatever intensity you prefer. Now in painting by the selection method, I'm going to create the same shadow using a combination of the selection tool in freehand mode and the fill layer command. To begin, I just trace the outline of the previous manual shadow, but use the selection tool to do so. Here I'm creating a little bit of deviation in the shadow path so it looks like that painting has some depth some thickness out from the wall but that line it still has to be straight and of course i would take much more time with this if this were a real world job and the same applies for the uh, edge of the shadow that's going to come across the floor and across this carpet. That shadow will in fact also vanish off to the same vanishing point or a new vanishing point in the back. I finish up the area of the shadow, closing off the marching ants. And I'm going to make sure I have the color black selected. And then I'm going to use the layer menu to actually fill that shape. Coming back down to the opacity slider to get just the right amount of opacity. Now I'm going to speed it up a bit to show you another way to create this shadow with a selection method. And of course, the first steps remain the same, selecting the area. But now I'm going to switch to the 
airbrush or the soft brush and I'm going to brush it the shadow giving different areas of the shadow as much contrast as I want. And then the same can be done with the eraser where you're actually erasing out the shadow to feature lighter areas of the building or to reduce the amount of contrast. We can do the same with that shadow for the tree outside the windows. And start by creating an organic shape with the selection tool. Close it off. Fill the area with black. And then adjust the opacity to adjust the intensity of the shadow. And I will now use the eraser to put back in those areas that we took out before where the sun comes through the foliage of the tree. Don't forget that you can go into much more depth with the Procreate Accelerator online course I've created. See the description below for details. To see the next video in this series, click on the image you see here, and I'll see you in the next lesson.